Hello everybody and happy 4th of July. This year we're celebrating the 244th anniversary of American independence. Now ordinarily on the 4th of July, I'd be having a big reception with hundreds of people, but it's 2020 and it's COVID-19, so we're not getting together with hundreds of people anymore. A few weeks back, somebody asked me how I was settling into Nigeria. I've been here almost seven months now. And I told them I loved Nigeria, I liked it so much. Although I did think by now I'd be seeing a little more of Nigeria and a little less of the walls inside my house. Because like so many people, I'm mostly working from home, teleworking, uh, to minimize contact with other people in a fight against COVID-19. We all need to say, COVID-19 stops with me. So instead, I thought I'd invite all of you to take a tour of my home. Uh, and get to see the art that is featured here through a wonderful program called Art and Embassies that allows American ambassadors to borrow works of art from American and local artists. You'll be seeing works by Americans interested in Africa, African Americans, uh, Nigerian Americans, Nigerian artists, and I hope that you'll really enjoy the show. These two pieces right here are part of that collection by Victor Ekput, and I love the, the juxtaposition of the traditional uh, Nigerian artistic expression of a head, my Beninese queen that I've had for a very long time, and a 21st century Nigerian's depiction of a head. I think it's a nice counterpoint. I'll tell you more about the artist a little later. Here we are with a painting by Nike Davis Okundai called Rhythms of Life. It's one of three works by Nike that are here in my house, including one in collaboration with Tola Wewe. Let me tell you a little bit about what the United States is doing in Nigeria to assist with the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, the United States has long been the international leader in the health sector. And here in Nigeria, over the last 20 years, of the more than $8 billion of assistance we've brought to Nigeria, over $5 billion of that has been in health. So with the onset of the epidemic, what we have done is transform cleverly and, and seamlessly the investments that we had made in things like AIDS and malaria and tuberculosis to form the backbone of the lab testing network uh, to support the logistics supply chains that are needed to, to fight this pandemic. But what I'm especially proud of is the more than 60 people who work for the U.S. mission from the Walter Reed Army Institute for Research, from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, and with USAID, who are working side by side with their Nigerian colleagues at the Presidential Task Force and Ministries in order to help flatten this curve, in order to help combat this pandemic. But of course, it's not only about laboratories and logistics to succeed in COVID-19. We all have a personal responsibility for helping to flatten this curve. And it's so empowering to know that through our personal behavior, we can help make a contribution to that. That means social distancing and wearing masks when you're outside and washing your hands. Everybody needs to be able to say that COVID-19 stops with me. And now we're in a room in my home that I've taken to calling the Worcester Room. I'm from Worcester, Massachusetts, and in this room I have several photographs and, and paintings um, that show the Worcester area. 
Right behind me is a, a painting by uh, a central Massachusetts artist named Michael Graves. Uh, he likes to paint outdoor scenes of, of the New England area. This is actually the train station in my hometown in Worcester, Massachusetts. It's called Union Station. And with its flags fluttering on their flagpoles, I think it's a great image for the 4th of July. His depictions of, of everyday scenes really re a reminder of the things that endure, uh, family and faith and, and beautiful scenery. And it's a very reassuring image in, in these very changing times. And in just a moment, you'll see also some photographs from the Worcester Art Museum from the Bullard collection. Uh, Bullard was a photographer around the turn of the last century who took pictures of his neighbors in a lower middle class neighborhood called Beaver Brook. It was inhabited by white people, African Americans, Native Americans, and he depicts his neighbors um, showing the, the lives that they had created for themselves. Many of the subjects were people who had left the southern part of the United States after man emancipation. So it's a, a very interesting story of the evolution of race in the United States and a very classic American story of migration and making a new place for yourself. These are people who were staking a claim to the new life they were making. Thank you so much for joining me in my home for this COVID-19 version of a July 4 celebration. Right now I'm standing in front of a painting by Stanley Ogbontain called Meeting Point. It's one of two works that he has in the collection at my home. Please check back on our websites and social media pages. I hope in the next few weeks to have a virtual catalog of all of the works of art hanging in the house. I think that you'll enjoy them. So as we say goodbye, let's think about what we can all do to help make the COVID-19 epidemic pass and to be able to prevail against this disease. Washing our hands, wearing a face mask when we're outside, avoiding large crowds, practicing social distancing. Remember, COVID-19 stops with me and COVID-19 will stop with you too. Thanks so much.